thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate the invitation uh, to be uh, involved in this uh, seminar today. I had, had the opportunity to come out to a couple of your events in the past, and uh, thank you uh, to Mohammed and the rest of the organization for inviting me. When um, one of the first things I think need to be recognized, and um, and I've probably missed some of the speeches before, is that the, the challenges and the concerns that you talk about, you're not alone in those. Um, many new Canadians, new Canadian communities, when uh, they, they come to Canada, they have the same concerns, the same same issues that, uh, that you are going through right now. So at the end of the day, this is not a Somali problem or a Somali community problem. This, to us, is a Canadian problem. And we need to work together to address these issues and concerns that you have. Most of you have come to Canada, it's the same way my father did and, 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 and many other new Canadians, to make a better life for yourselves and for your children. Better schools, better economy. And when Canada opens its doors to new Canadians from all over the world, it makes it available the best what Canada has to offer. A democratic system of government to make sure that you have a, a say. One of the best economies in the world so you can provide for your family. A healthcare system that's second to none that you use, rich or poor, whatever part of Canada you're from. A justice system to help to keep our streets safer. But with all of that comes the change from where your parents maybe come from, or for a lot of the young people, just adjusting to this system, even though this is the only system that you've ever known. Um, there was a, uh, somebody had told me about a story where a reporter had asked somebody about uh, one of, the, one of the people that were involved in, in one of the shootings, um, I believe, last year. A reporter had asked about this young person and said, you know, maybe, maybe this is because of all the, uh, the tragedy back home in Somalia. Well, that person had been in the country since they were like one. It had nothing to do with what was happening in Somalia. It has to do with what was, what were, what's happening here. And our relationship with either the Somalian community or new Canadians, um, our relationship with elected officials, our relationship with uh, the police, our relationship with the media. So it's about that time of adjustment that, uh, that we need to work on, and, uh, and I'm pleased that you're continuously working on that. Because as Somalians, as, as, as other new Canadians, we need to embrace Canada and its values and its way of life. And yet, keeping your culture and what makes you uniquely small. I would say that you need to strive as a community to have more police officers. This is something that uh, the, uh, the Sikh community, the Punjabi community worked at long, um, a number of years ago. It was, it was an initiative to, to meet with uh, the RCMP, the, the local police forces, and uh, talk about getting more uh, police officers from our community in the force, well, across Canada. It's the same thing that uh, the Somali community needs to work on. Elected officials. We need to get uh, more Somalians involved in the, uh, in the political system. And not just elected officials themselves, but also hopefully uh, as, as staff members as well. Sometimes a lot of say, um, what happens in an elected official's office comes from the staff, and, and, and sometimes they uh, know a lot more about what's going on than, uh, than we do, uh, well before we do. So it's important to try to get into those, uh, into those positions. We need more Somalian teachers to get involved in the school system. And we need those professional Somalians, the doctors, the lawyers, that are out there to get involved in their own community and um, encourage other young people. One of the best ways to do this is through education, is to have an education system where young people can, can thrive and uh, can achieve those great things. But it's also about young people 
feeling comfortable in their schools. Because sometimes you don't feel, maybe you don't feel Canadian. I don't know what that means, if you don't feel Canadian. But I know uh, growing up here, you don't feel like everybody else. But you're definitely not, you don't definitely feel Somali, like from Somalia. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm from, or when I was younger, from India. And I was born in BC. So we as, a, uh, as Canada, as a community, need to work together with our teachers, our uh, police officers, our um, other elected officials to try to make Canada our own. And I applaud you as a community to continue to work, work on this. What I will close with is um, the media. And it's something that uh, I would encourage you to, to sit down with the media and uh, maybe with editorial boards of, of, of different, uh, whether it's newspapers or TV stations and whatnot, and, and sit down with them and just have a good discussion about it. I've done this in the past for the, uh, the Sikh community, and, and um, because the media itself says a lot about uh, who you are to the rest of the, uh, of the city, of, to the rest of the Canadians. And if the stories continuously are negative, with Somalian and headlines, then that's the image that everybody else gets. But when you guys are doing good things, and you do, you do great things. Volunteer, you're out there working in the community, we need those things highlighted as well. So you need to build that relationship with the media. So I want to, uh, again, congratulate you. I want to thank uh, my colleague, Brian Rathke, for coming out as well. He's a member of parliament to uh, much of the Somali community. And uh, to continue to work um, with us elected officials, we're here to help you out. There's um, possibly grants available that we can uh, work with you to help uh, to uh, set up some programs, federal, provincial, municipal. So I know everybody's wanting to work with you. Let's, uh, let's, let's sit down and, uh, and get this to go. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. This takes time, but it's, it's time f uh, for you guys uh, to, to, to get involved at every level, elected officials, municipally, everything. Thank you. <coughs> welcome uh, the mother of uh, Mohammed Ali Aden who, uh, who got killed in this violence on August 30, 2008. Um, please welcome Fozia Mohammed Yusuf. She's basically um, talking about, um, she's moved with the uh, poem that Amal said, because it reminds her of her son. And she's basically giving a little history of when her, husband, when her uh, son got killed and that there's, there was also 13 more children that got killed after him and 23 more actually. So she's basically just pouring out her heart and what she feels inside. You can only feel this as a mother. Um, 